Shalom Chavarim. Hey, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, but this is a little bit different broadcast today. Also something we wanted to share with you. I got this information, learned this actually when uh, our good friend John Moore was uh, down here uh, and John had one of his good friends that actually is on John's show, same time mine airs. His name's Leon and Leon had shared with me about a thing called EMP Shield. And EMP Shield is a device that will protect your vehicles uh, from uh, a possible EMP strike here in the United States uh, if that were to ever happen. And I'm always more and more convinced that it could happen, but it also protects against lightning strikes, uh, protects against uh, solar flares that could cause disruption of computer and electronics. And so I purchased one. Uh, actually, I purchased two of them because we have two cars and uh, one for my little Nissan truck here. And I'm going to show you how do you, you can actually install this. And as well, uh, we're going to be set up on our, uh, 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 you'll be able to order this directly through us and get a discount uh, rather than ordering it uh, online per se. Uh, well, you'll still be ordering it online, but you'll save uh, some money by ordering it using a, a code from Israeli News Live, which I think the code's gonna be INL, uh, but check the description below for sure to know exactly what that code will be and also a link on how to be able to get this product. But it's very simple. And when you get your EMP shield, and I'll kind of show you a little closer there, uh, it comes in this box. On the back of it, it's, it's kind of like a, a self-adhesive Velcro, but also with the places to be able to drill and bolt it to the inside of your vehicle. Uh, you have three different cables. Uh, you're going to have the red, black, and green for ground. The red and black is going to be going directly to your battery terminals. Uh, and also, they show you a very nice instructions here on how to put it up if installing in a vehicle, EMP sheet 12 volt vehicle. Uh, and of course, uh, I think they've also, they got different steps for it, but I'm using of course 12 volt. And so they give you the instructions right here, step by step to follow. Uh, it's very simple because wherever you can find a place to mount it inside your car. And Leon had recommended too that you know, you put that ground wire to the frame as far away from the battery as you possibly can. It's just a recommendation he made. Of course, I have a Nissan, so as far as tools I'll need, really, is just going to be my 10 millimeter. I use a ratchet uh, version here to make it easier to be able to do the battery post there. It'll fit properly. And I also have my, uh, my cordless drill here to be able to run some uh, self-tapping screws to help not just that self-adhesive Velcro, but to be able to really make sure that this thing stays in place in the vehicle uh, as it bounces around. So anyway, let's get started. So I started only just using the, uh, the self-adhesive Velcro there. I'm gonna take and attach my wires, get it to where I know I want it to be at. Uh, and it might be best, kind of hindsight for me at this point here, but uh, might be best that you attach your wires first, have it in the general location before even putting the Velcro on, uh, just in case for some reason you decide, oh wow, the wire is not gonna work, it's not gonna reach. But the wires are so long, I think that we're not gonna have any issues whatsoever about this. And of course, always remembering your hot and your ground wires here, keeping those separated when you begin to attach to your battery so you don't have any uh, firework display for yourself. <coughs> so first thing I'm working on is getting that green wire and down to the chassis of the vehicle. And as Leon had suggested to me, making sure that that uh, ground wire is the furthest away from your battery as you can possibly get it. So I'm gonna actually crawl under the vehicle and find a suitable place on the chassis, but I'm not gonna allow the wire to tuck down to where it could get caught up on anything and the next thing you know, your ground wire gets snatched off. So I wanna stay furthest away from the battery, but yet also on the chassis somewhere to where it's safe and the wire is not gonna be uh, exposed. And then I'll be using Loctites to tie those wires down so that they don't get picked up by sticks and stuff. Especially, 
if you're driving in the woods, things like that. That's why I have this little Nissan truck here is so that I can, you know, it's got four wheel drive. That way, if we have to be off road somewhere, you're not going to get caught up in the brush. Okay, so the first thing I did is I got that ground wire secured and I did it to the frame. Now the instructions doesn't necessarily recommend that you have to do it to the frame. They say you can even connect it to where the ground wire goes with the battery. But uh, Leon had made that suggestion, so I just took his suggestion. And I also made sure, because if you're going to attach it to your frame, especially if you're going into the chassis beyond the engine, you got to keep in mind the exhaust normally might be going down that side of the vehicle as well. So I made sure I kept the wire strap using Loctis. Well, I got a bag of them right here. I took some Loctis and tied those rascals down, the wires. Also making sure that there were no, uh, of course Loctis for those of you who don't know what a Loctis is, uh, but um, making sure that the, none of the wire would be anywhere near the bottom of the chassis that can get caught up by brush and break it and then the next thing you know you're not being protected. Uh, I don't have any wire left. I only had just this little bit. I'll end up connecting that to something that has not got extreme temperatures. That's another issue too. I just don't want my wires to be around extreme temperatures. It could melt it, cause it to ground out, something of that effect there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect it to the ground post and then to the positive post. Uh, and that's what we'll start on now. For me, I'm using uh, metric because I do uh, have... Um, a Japanese vehicle here so always make sure you have the right <clears throat> the right size uh, socket if you're 10 millimeter or 7 16 half inch depending on American make things of that nature there because you don't want to uh, last thing you want strip out your battery post you know and I'm sure if you have a local mechanic they could do this get this done for you, it'd be done uh, exactly according to the instructions because I'm sure there's going to be many uh, women also that, uh, that may not be mechanically inclined. Uh, actually I actually have an aunt though that is. She could take an engine out of a vehicle and put it back in again. Uh, but these are just some of the things you want to think about here when you're doing this. And I'm going to attach it to the post, It's not to the post of the battery, but to the what the ground wire itself because I want to make sure I have a very good connection so that's what I'm doing here and again making sure at this point here that you don't have anything exposed those wires touching because now we're going to the battery and we don't want to get any arcing going on in there so also make sure to see I just noticed there just now that this wire would not get a good contact. So I'm going to have to put a washer in behind that so I, I can get a good contact. They have pretty good size eyelets on here for bigger posts, so you have to keep that in mind. I couldn't find the right size washer, so I decided to take the, the, the wire all the way off and attach it to the back side. That way I get a good contact on this. And now I'm going to feed it back in. We'll do it like that. Bolt can still get a bite so it doesn't twist on you as well. If not, you'll have to maybe use a boxed in wrench, crescent wrench, something like that um, to put it back on with. Once it gets inside there, it's got a bite now. Now we know that the ground wire is now connected. Now we're going to do the last one, which is the positive cable. There is a fuse in here for the positive cable as well. And what I don't want is I don't want all the wires to get all tangled up. So I'm going to make sure we pull, find a nice place to tuck away the excess so we don't have the wire everywhere. On modern cars, you do have other wires that are coming up to that positive side as well that connect. And they all have, there, there's like a fuse panel like on this particular vehicle right there on the battery post but this particular the MP shield has its own fuse built in so I don't want to be on the back side of the fuses there so what I'm going to do is actually make sure that I'm directly into this positive cable that's just my preference now one of the most important things is that when this thing is installed 
you should get a green light pop up on your EMP shield and we have a green light so we're gonna finish tucking away the wires show you that little step there how I'm gonna do it anyway and then we'll take and uh, at the same time we will um, bolt down that EMP shield so it stays stronger on the uh, firewall of the vehicle doing service on the vehicle or something and you don't want these wires to be in the way so I have found a nice little place here and and I can put it all down in there and we'll take a Ziploc tie that I already have here and it's on another wire harness right here I can kind of attach that together and we have all that and trim off some of this excess I'm real funny about that my wife will tell you that so got that and it looks like we are good to go all we're going to do now is we're going to take and uh, going to drill out a little spot here for this thing to be able to mount it into the frame that's not Okay, so I've got that, got the pilot holes there. And let's see if I can get a bottom. I'm only gonna put two in myself. Everything is still operable. We're good to go. So guys, uh, that is the installation of the EMP shield. And uh, I didn't actually time myself, but when I had all my tools together and everything, it, I'd say it only took about 30 minutes to actually install this, but so, uh, if you're like me, you've been concerned about an EMP strike if it happened, how would that affect us? You know, just if you go there, uh, I'll put a link to the website in there, empshield.com, uh, and they actually give us a link, empshield.com, INL50, but it just brings you to that blank page there, and then you have to kind of... Uh, you have to kind of go from there to do it. But the, 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 the representative for them of EMP Shield also said to me, you got to be careful because there's a lot of advertisements on there. They said if you click away from the website looking at one of the promotions that talks about it, the videos, unless you come back, come back to the actual site and use your coupon code of INL50, you won't get the discount. Uh, that's very important. They said that you, you're aware of that. And so... Uh, pray about it if it's something you feel led to do. Uh, I know there might be women out there that are feel a little un uncomfortable about getting something like that. How would I attach it to my car? You'd probably have to get a local mechanic or somebody to help you, but I don't think it'd be expensive to have it uh, uh, attached because as I put the video up uh, either this evening or tomorrow, I'll put a video of how I put it on. It is very, very simple to attach to, to your vehicle.